So when you're using advanced custom fields for WordPress, it's a great plugin. And if you link that through with Elementor Pro, it really gives some fantastic options to make web design, advanced web design, incredibly easy. But there are still some limitations, but I've come across a plugin that'll help reduce some of those limitations. And in this video, I just want to demonstrate what that plugin does and how easy it is to start tapping into some of that advanced functionality that still has that really ease of use when working with WordPress. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Touch, the channel where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider smashing that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. Be notified every time new content is added to the channel. Okay, so Advanced Custom Fields Pro, Elementor Pro and WordPress, as I've said, is a fantastic platform for advanced websites, but those holes need to be patched. We can't use galleries very easily without hand coding these at this point in time, but I've come across a plugin that'll help you do these kinds of things while retaining all that flexibility and ease of use of Elementor Pro. Now, first of all, I just want to say this is not a sponsored video. I purchased this plugin myself out of my own money because it's something I wanted to see how well it would work with Elementor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can use this and just scratch the surface of what could be done with this plugin. But hopefully what it'll do is it'll demonstrate just some of the cool things you can do. So we're going to take a look at how we create a custom website and we're going to start tapping in to some of these extra tools that this plugin gives us. What is this plugin? It's dynamic content for Elementor. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to WordPress, fire up Elementor Pro and start creating our own custom WordPress website using ACF Pro and this new plugin. So we're going to keep this example pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new section for our blog that's going to be about restaurants. And inside there, we're going to add in a couple of different elements. We're going to add in a map. We're going to add in some images for a gallery and a couple of other things just to make it a little bit more bespoke. And then we're going to assign that template that we create inside Elementor Pro and assign that specifically to the restaurant category. Okay, so let's take a look at how we do it. This is the plugin we're using, which is dynamic content for Elementor. We're only gonna utilize a couple of the simple little options on you, and the link for this is in the description below. So go and check it out if you think it's something you're interested in, add into your particular toolbox, and expand in what you can do then with ACF and Elementor Pro and so on. Okay, so this is the look that we've got at the moment. You can see we've got our sections at the top. We've got no posts currently set up in here. First thing we need to do is go through and set up our ACS, our custom fields, and then assign it to the relevant section. So if we come back into Elementor, okay, so what we need to do first of all is come down to the custom field section. We're going to create a new field group. So we say add new. And once we do that, we're going to give this a name and we're going to call this restaurants. Once we've done that, we can now go through and specify what we want to do with this. So we've got post type is equal to post. We need to change that and say we want this to be post category is equal to, and you can see it'll now pull up all the different categories you've got assigned as part of our posts in WordPress. Restaurants is one of those sections. We're going to click on that, and we're going to leave that. That's now all the rule we need to do. But obviously, if you want to create more complex rules, you can add additional stages to this to make sure you can filter it to get this content specifically where you want it to be. If we look underneath, we've got some options on how we want things to be displayed. And because we want to control how this is done, there's a couple of things we want to do. We're going to say we want to sort of disable the excerpt, discussions, comments, and we're going to get rid of author, format, page attributes, tags, and trackbacks, just to clean up the interface to make it just a little bit more simple. Once we've done that, we now need to go through and create the fields we want. So the first field we're going to put in is the actual gallery of images. So we're going to call this gallery. It'll automatically fill out the field name for us. If you're happy with that, you can leave it as is. But obviously, if you want to change it to something a bit more memorable, you could do that. Next step, we're going to change the field type, and we're going to come down, and we want to find the gallery option. So we're going to choose that. We could put instructions if we want to in there. We can specify whether this is required or not, minimum selections, and so on. So obviously, if you want to do any of this, you can set this up to get exactly what you want. But I'm going to leave it as is, except for the fact that I want to add in a couple of post types. So I could say I want it to be JPEG. JPEG with an E, we can say we want PNGs and we don't mind having GIFs or GIFs depending upon where you are and how you want to say it. Okay, so there's the first field. Next up, we're going to create a map field. So we're going to call this map. Field name is fine. We're going to choose then. We want this to be 
a Google Map. So we're going to come down, say Google Maps. Now, there's one thing you need to be aware of. You need to make sure that you've got a Google Maps API set up before you can use this. I'm going to go into how you do that. It's a little bit convoluted when it comes to ACF, but there's plenty of information out there on how to do it. And depending upon the setup you've got will depend upon how you configure things on there. I'm going to assume that you know how to use this. If not, just drop me some information in the comment section below, and I'll take a look at giving you some additional instructions and some links if you need them. Okay, so there's the second field. We're going to leave all the settings in there as is. That's all fine. And we're going to add a third and final field in. And this one we're simply going to call slider. Again, we're going to, we need to come down and specify we want this to be a gallery option again. Now, even though this is a slider, we set it as a gallery so we can upload multiple images at the same time. Again, you can go through and set any of the options you want in there. I'm going to leave them as they are. Once I've done that, I'm going to let you come up and click on Publish, and that should save all my information, set up my parameters, my, my sort of control methods and things like that. Okay, so now that we've created our field group, the next thing we need to do is go into our post section. So we're going to jump into post, and we're going to say Add New. And you can see that we've got a new area at the bottom, which is dynamic content. Now this is specific to the dynamic content for Elementor plugin, but I'm gonna leave that as is at the moment. I don't want to deal with that. I just wanna cover these sort of basic things just so we can get up and running with some basics. Okay, so the next thing we can do, you can see that's all we've got. We don't have those ACF fields in there. And that's the reason because we haven't assigned it a category yet. Once we hit restaurants, you'll see that now opens up those additional options that are specific to the ACF. If we come in and we just took that off there and we set this to be, for example, fashion, you can see it doesn't show those fields because we assigned it specifically to the restaurant category. However, if we do select multiple different categories, and as long as restaurant is one of them, it will display. But obviously, if you look at the fashion section, because it'll use a different template, it won't pull in the information and lay it out the way we want by using the new restaurant template that we're going to create in a moment. I hope that makes sense. So let's just disable the fashion section. Okay, so now we can go through and just fill out some basic information. I'm just going to pre-populate this with just some just some filler text so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've given it a name and I've uploaded some text to it. The next thing we're going to do is just quickly go in and assign some images to the gallery. So we're going to add to gallery. I've already uploaded a couple of images. So I'm going to select those and just hit select. You can see now that it drops them into the gallery section. Next up, we're just going to put an address in to the map section. So there's the address that I want to use. And finally, we're going to come to the slider and we're going to choose some images for here as well. I'm just going to choose these two. Let's click on select. So there's our information assigned to our first post, our restaurant post. So quickly, just going to add in a featured image and we'll choose this one. And we'll say set featured image and then we'll click the publish or update post. Now, what this is going to look like on the page itself, if we jump over to our restaurant section and refresh this, you can see there's our normal listing, and we've got this as part of the normal sort of archive page. Now, if we click on that and go and take a look, we'll see we get the single post page, and you can see everything is laid out the same as every other page, and this is what we want to change. So let's just jump back over into our dashboard, and we're going to come down this time down to Elementor, and we're going to go to My Templates. Once we're in my templates, we can now go through and create a new template. So we can either come in and choose the section of the different type of template we want to create, for example, single, footer, archive, and so on. Or we can just come in and click on add new. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. If we come into single, for example, because we have nothing created, it'll say add your first single. So we're going to say add single. Single is fine. It's exactly what we want. Select the post type. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to say we want this to be a post. And we're going to call this single restaurant. Now don't worry that we haven't actually assigned it to use the restaurant category. We can do that when we set the conditions at the end. So to create our template. That'll take us through then into Elementor and we can now set up the template. We can choose any of the predefined layers if you want to, but for this example we're going to click out of that and we're going to create our own. Okay, so we've got all the different options on the left-hand side. We're going to close these up a section until we see the dynamic content at the bottom. You can see we have dynamic content, we have dynamic ACF, as well as dynamic content post. There's a pile of extra options. They're all part of the dynamic content for Elementor. We're interested in the ACF block. That's the four different options we have available in front of us by here. So you've got ACF, you've got ACF Gallery, Google Maps, and ACF Slider. So the first thing you want to do is put a slider image at the top. So you're going to drag that over and drop it in there. You can see that now pre-fills that out. And we're ready to start editing. So we've got all the options on the left-hand side. Now, there are tons and tons of options in here, way beyond what I need to cover. But I recommend if you do grab this, this sort of plugin, take a look at those, experiment with them. I'm going to go over some of the basics. 
So the first thing we've got is the ACF field list. So we can click on there, you can see we have the different fields that are available that pull in to a slider. So we've got slider and gallery. We choose slider, that'll then start to populate it with the images that we've uploaded ready to start working and styling things. So we can go through and style any of this, the image settings for example, we can choose the quality of the image you want to use, we can go through and force the width on it, the size, the scales and all those kinds of good things. If you want to put a drop shadow, box shadow, we can do all that kind of stuff, we can control that and adjust it, do whatever we want. Okay, so let's go through now and actually put some other elements in. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we want to add in another widget. So with this time we're going to come into single and what we need to do is just simply pull in the title and the actual content itself. So for this we're going to create two columns. We're going to have a slimmer column on the right hand side and a wider column on the left hand side. Now we're going to come in and we're going to say we want to have the post title. We're also going to come in and say we want to put the post content or the post yeah post content drop that in there there you go that pulls the text in and the title so that's all pretty good now on the right hand side we want to use some more of these dynamic content for element or widget so let's just come back over scroll down this time we're going to grab and put the gallery in there so we're going to drag and drop that over on the right hand side again we can do the same thing so the acf field list so we're going to click on there this time we're going to choose gallery That'll drop it in there. Now, there's one of the things with this. There is a little bit of a quirk that it doesn't display correctly all the time. But when you look at on the front end of the site, it does work correctly. So don't worry too much if it does look a little bit weird and quirky. Now, we do have some options on here. We can enable a wow animation. We can go through the gallery settings and do things like put some padding and things on there. So let's just say we put a padding of five. You can see that now adjust the padding around the edges. Image settings, we can come into there and we can specify the image size we're going to work with. We can even come back into the gallery settings. We can choose the type that we want. So we can have things like rows, grids, masonry, diamond, hexagonal, and so on. We leave it as masonry. That's looking pretty good. And we'll leave that as is there. And we'll just jump back out of this now, scroll back down to the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop in the map. So we're going to grab the Google Maps, drop that underneath there. And you can see that now pulls in a default filled out map. We now to go through and just tell it which field we want to pull that information from. So we say select the field. You can see there's our map, our Google Maps. That will pull it in and you can now go through and adjust things like the zoom level. So you can configure this to get exactly what you want. We can adjust the height of this to get it exactly within the design, exactly how we want. Okay, so now that we've gone through, filled out the basic information, set our template the way we want, we can now go through and publish this and it'll give us the opportunity to set parameters we want. So let's come into publish. You can see now we get the option to include all posts and all or we can come in and we can specify we want it in a particular category. So again, we want to specify that the category is going to be the restaurant. Click on there, go to the next option and start typing in. That'll go through and search and there we go as our restaurant. So this will only use this template in a category of posts that equals restaurants. In the same way that when we set up the ACF fields, the custom fields, they would only display inside the post editor when you set a category of restaurants. So there's our condition all set up. We click on publish. Once we've done that now, we can jump back over and take a look at this in action. So if we come back over, we can see there's our original looking template. And if we refresh the page, we'll now see our updated custom template specifically for the restaurant pages. And there we go. You can see it's now pulled in. So we've got our slider using our images. We've got our smaller section there for our gallery. We have our map, our title, and we have our content. Now let's go back up and check this out. So if we go to lifestyle, for example, and we see something that isn't inside that restaurant category, and we go and take a look at it, you'll see that this uses the default template this inside Ocean WPs, which I'm using my theme at the moment. So that's using that template. However, we come back over to home and we go into our restaurant based category. That uses our custom template where we've pulled in additional custom fields easily using dynamic content for Elementor. Now, this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with this. There are tons more options. And in future videos, if you like this, I'll cover a lot more of those things in a lot more detail. So don't forget to comment in the comment section below and let me know, do you like this method? Do you think this plugin is worth investing some more time in, demonstrating some more things that you can do with it to give you a really good understanding of how to start using this? Pop those comments in the comment section and just let me know. So there we go. That's pretty much wraps up what I want to cover in today's video. Hopefully it's demonstrated how you can use this plugin in conjunction with ACF Pro, Elementor Pro and WordPress to create something just a little bit more bespoke, a little bit more professional and going beyond some of the things you can do with WordPress straight out of the box. 
If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comment section below why you didn't enjoy the video. It helps me create more, better content for you in the future. Well, as always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.